Here's a question for you. How do your cells make energy? Obviously, you wake up in the morning, you have energy, right? And you go about your day. But somehow, the food that we eat and the oxygen that we breathe in our cells make energy. And that energy is what we use throughout the day to go, go, go. How does that happen? Well, in our cells, we call it respiration, but the reactions that are happening there are very close to what we call combustion reactions in chemistry, but it's way more complicated what's happening inside of your cell. Let's talk about combustion for just a second. Now, what's happening in combustion is you have a fuel, call it this red ball, could be a carbon atom or something, and you have some oxygen. Here I have it as O2, and they're double bonded like they are in the, uh, in the oxygen in the air. Now these things can banging into each other, but nothing's gonna happen until you raise the temperature with a spark or a flame so that they can crash into each other with enough force so that these things can break apart. Breaking the chemical bonds, overcoming the bond energy that's here. Now when they're free, they're gonna bang into this fuel here, and of course there's attraction going on as well, and so if the electron energy can go into a lower energy state by bonding with the fuel, that's exactly what it's gonna do. This is exactly like being on the top of a mountain and you have a rock, and you're 20,000 feet in the air and you just gently toss this rock. If you don't toss the rock over the edge, you put it on the ground, the rock's not gonna go anywhere. But if you give it a little bit of activation energy to get over the edge of the lip of the mountain, it's gonna fall all the way down 20,000 feet down to the bottom, going to the lowest energy state that it can reach. So basically, whenever we break apart bonds, we were releasing energy, and then when we form new bonds, we were in a different energy configuration, and the difference in the energy goes into heating up the products, and that's the energy release and burning. Now, this is critically important. Before the combustion happens, the electrons are what we call high potential energy. This is like being at the top of the mountain. In the products, the carbon dioxide, the energy of those electrons is lower, just like the rock being at the bottom of the mountain. And the difference here in the energy as the electrons move from high to low state, that energy released is the energy, the heat that's happening when a log gets very hot and can burn you. Now in your cells, similar things are happening, but we don't call it combustion, we call it respiration. And instead of one reaction where the energy is released like really, really fast and can burn you, in your cells, it's like 15 or 20, literally, different chemical reactions. And instead of the electrons going instantaneously, they go very, very gradually to a lower energy state. And instead of the released energy burning you, your body stores that potential energy in molecules like adenosine triphosphate, which your body can then break down further later to release energy for you to go. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.